As part of efforts to make sure that the Nigerian economy recovers fully in line with the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan launched by President Muhammadu Buhari, the federal government is set to organize focus labs as from March 5, 2018. Minister of Budget and National Planning Udo Odoma, who briefed State House correspondent after the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting, said the focus labs, which will bring together domestic and international investors, will look at the areas of agriculture and transportation, power and gas, manufacturing and processing. All the indices in the economy uh, since the ERGP was launched by Mr. President in April, all the indices in the economy have been moving positive. But we're not satisfied even though it's all positive because we feel that we can, we can still do better. And that is why we're organizing the labs. Uh, the focus labs will be uh, commencing in the week of the 5th of March. We'll be bringing in investors, uh, both domestic and international. We'll be looking at three areas agriculture and transportation, power and gas, manufacturing and processing. And so uh, council was briefed about that and it's going to involve uh, many ministers in the Federal Executive Council who are going to be part of it, who are going to actually drive that process. And we target for the labs alone, we target to be able to generate at least $25 billion worth of new investment. And when I say billion dollars worth, some of it will be Naira, some will be dollars, but just uh, so because we're expecting a, a significant amount of domestic, domestic investment, not just foreign investment. So in fact, domestic investment is part of our focus and our target. A memorandum seeking the augmentation of the price due to the need for increased scope of work, especially shoreline protection in the Tinkan trailer and truck park, which is almost finished, also made it to the Federal Executive Council meeting, as made known by the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Baba Tudi Raji Fashola. Memorandum seeking augmentation of the uh, price uh, due to the need for reviewed. Uh, Increased scope of works, especially shoreline protection of the Tinkan Island uh, trailer and truck park, which is uh, almost finished. as an ongoing project. Uh, we sought council's approval to um, augment the price from um, 8.66 billion to 9.553 billion, which was a an augmentation of 892.177289 million. And uh, we expect that that truck park will now be com completed this year. And uh, it will be one of the uh, many uh, multi pronged efforts uh, being uh, pursued to give relief to the Apapa area to facilitate. Uh, vehicular truck and uh, trailer movement and also maritime uh, um, and uh, import and export business and general economic activity for Papa in particular, Lagos at large and the country uh, as a whole. This week's Federal Executive Council meeting was presided over by President Muhammadu Buhari from the Aso Presidential Villa Abuja and Festus H. Jirog and Fifen for Ben Television. There was rowdy session in the Nigerian Senate over adoption of Section 25 of the Electoral Act as recommended by the Conference Committee on INEC, which seek to reorder the sequence of the general election. Lawmakers protested against the adoption of the report by Senate and House of Representatives Joint Committee on Amendment of the Electoral Act. Citing Section 76 of the Constitution, lawmakers insisted that the responsibility of scheduling election 
rests on the electoral body, insisting that due process was not followed in the abduction of the section. This has been a subject of controversy, with many putting forth argument on who has the power to schedule election. Cross section of lawmakers believe that the amendment of section 25, subsection 1, which has changed the sequence of the election for the conduct of the National Assembly to come first and then the governorship and state house of assembly. Briefing journalists on the standoff, the aggrieved senators said despite the adoption of the report by the Senate, they will insist on its reversal. They allege that the amendment was targeted at President Muhammad Buhari's re-election bid. Now, let me tell you why some of us are doing this. I come from Delta State. I didn't win my election on the platform of APC. I didn't need to run with Mr. President to win my elections. But what is fair is fair. You don't make a law targeted to one person. The perception out there is that this Section 25 was included to target Mr. President. He is Mr. President. I do not believe in that. And I cannot sit by and watch why a law is made, targeted at Mr. President. That's why some of us here are protesting and will continue to protest this and I can assure you it will not become law. So what we are now saying is that it is not because of Mr. President in court. What happens tomorrow if you are there? Will you now want to amend the constitution again to suit yourself? That is not it. But the most why I am not in support of it is that the economic crisis we have on the ground, we must look into it and start how we will, we will, I mean, we will stop it. So having staggered elections, people are even crying for the staggered two elections, and now we are going for another three elections. And only God knows how much it will cost. So why do we want to do a bill? Why do we want to make a law to address what, just one particular problem at a particular time? Targeted for This is a very partisan Report. Very partisan because you could see from the body language, from the from the utterances openly, from the gesturing, that uh, it is a pretty determined thing for a political party that is threatened by the APC government. I want to be sure that whatever incumbency uh, gives to anybody, we are denied that one. That's all that's that is in this report. And uh, I am among those standing with me here and those that are still coming out as you can see. You know, we, 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 we are not part of this and and we will continue to, 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 to go in the Added to that one, they said that why did you wait until after a long time INEC has come out with the timetables? They have been informing us every day you watch the chair of INEC saying that there is a balance of three hundred so so just in the so so elections. Why did you do that one? Uh, in terms of the fact that if you look at the cost benefit to the economy, Four elections in one month will be too staggering. You close the days and other things, it's not well for the economy, it's not well for the politics. The chairman of the Senate Committee on Independence National Electoral Commission, Senator Suleiman Nassif, have presented the report at the plenary on Wednesday. That the Senate House of Representatives do consider approving the Conference Committee report on a bill for an act to amend the Electoral Act number 6. 2010 and Electoral Amendment Act 2015 to provide a timeline for submission of list of candidates, sequence of election and political party primaries, use of technological device, limit of campaign expenses, address the omission of names of candidates or logo of political parties and other related matters 2018 as recommended. Conclusion. The Excellency, my highly respected colleagues, on behalf of members of the conference committee, we wish to thank members of both chambers of the National Assembly for the opportunity to serve. I thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, let me remind also on where the procedures are for conference reports. It's very simple and straightforward. You either adopt the report or you reject the report. So I'm going to make it simple. I'll put the question. Those in favor that we adopt this report say aye. aye. Those in favor that we reject it say nay. After the presentation, President of the Senate, 
Bukola Saraki put the adoption of the report to voice vote, saying there was no need for debate on it as it was from a conference committee which has harmonized the version of the two chamber. The passage of the report was followed by dissenting voices calling for a point of order within the chamber. After the voice of Ye had it, Saraki ruled on it, a development that generated an opera in the chamber. Saraki also ruled against the three senators who raised the point of order to protest. In my comments, I said, this institution, it must protect it. I know that every politics is local. I know. I appreciate that. But as much as it is local, we also have to maintain the integrity of this institution. So, I have heard you. And I'm sure your constituency to have heard you. The amendment of the Electoral Act, if approved by the President Muhammadu Burari, will uphold the change in order of election as adopted by the lawmaker. From Abuja, Muywa Bamdele reporting. President Muhammadu Buhari says Nigerian unity is a divine arrangement that nothing should be done to put asunder. Buhari said this in his goodwill message to Christians as they mark the Ash Wednesday, which marked the beginning of the 40 days fasting. In a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Femi Adesino, the president urged Nigerian Christians to continue to pray for the nation's unity and progress. The statement read, President Muhammad Ibrahim felicitates with Christians in Nigeria on the solemn occasion of the commencement of this year's Lenten season. The President enjoined all Nigeria to intensify love, brotherliness, and concern for the less privileged members of their community in order to strengthen the bond of togetherness. Lovely place, right? Yes. What's wrong? You don't look happy. Take a look around. Why can't my hotel be like this? I knew something was wrong, but I've got solution. Solution? What? Nanet. Nanet? Nanet offers you design solutions, building plans and construction, furnishing and equipping, financing, management, audit services, and many more services for a better hospitality business. Nanet, service with a smile. The federal government on Wednesday assured civil servants that it is working assiduously to review the current minimum wage of 18,000 Naira in the face of present realities. The head of civil service of the Federation, Mrs. Winifred Oyoita, who is one of the 30 members trapped National Minimum Wage Committee for the negotiation of a new national minimum wage for the country, 
stated this in Abuja during the second permanent secretary's quarterly breakfast meeting with the organized labor. Oyo Ita, who said a strong position paper was being fine-tuned to be presented to President Muhammadu Buhari, pledged the commitment of the federal government to the welfare and provision of conducive working environment for workers. Oyo Ita also used the medium to disclose that only 140 out of the 290 deputy directors that sat for the promotion examination recently in the federal civil service were successful. She told the labor union leaders present at the meeting that the lingering issues of promotion for the 2014 batch of directors in the administration cadre has also been resolved. The national leader of ruling all progressive Congress and former Lagos State Governor Ashwaju Ametinumbu has said that the assignment given to him by President Muhammadu Buhari is to restore peace within the party. Tinumbu said this after a closed door meeting with Chief John Oyegun led National Working Committee of the APC at the party's National Secretariat in Abuja. In his word, he said, I'm here at the Secretariat of the APC where I am a member and a pillar and the meeting today is to seek peace and have dialogue. End of quote. Also speaking to the reporter shortly after the meeting, the National Publicity Secretary of the party, Malam Balaji Abdullah, explained that the interaction was designed to strategize on how to go about the assignment given to Tenumbu by the president. He added that the party leadership promised to give him all the necessary support and assistance to achieve success. Responding to the question on the term of reference given to the Bola Ahmed led panel, Abdullah said that the term of reference is to look at area of conflict where we have issue and as a political party we must have issue. John Oyegun, while welcoming Tunumbu and his entourage, said it is necessary for the APC to put its house in order to become a political force in 2019. Oyegun said the party have major issues in National Assembly, Benue State, Kano, and Kogi State. In his response, Tinubu said his mission to the party secretariat was in line with the task given to him by President Bowari to resolve the crisis facing the party at various levels. He explained that despite the challenges facing the party and the administration of Bowari, the APC remain the best alternative for Nigeria. A youth group under the edges of New Nigerian Youth Progressive Alias has called on Nigerian elderly politicians to step aside and support the youth to take over power even as the country prepares for a general election in 2019. The group at the World Press Conference in Abuja said any older politician who failed to listen to the voice of the youth would face a disgraceful defeat in 2019 election and beyond. We are though not advocating for an all youth government, but we certainly we certainly disagree that the status, quo, the status quo must be changed. The old political actors must leave the center stage and play adversary role when the need arises. A plain level grant must be given to all Nigerians, both young and old, the opportunity to display their potential without any hindrance. Therefore, we tag our target in the forthcoming general elections is third to ensure the youth are elected to occupy 50% of local government wards and councils, state assemblies, state governors, and 70% of senates and federal house of reps. We call on our elderly politicians to honorable step aside and support these children, their children, or will face a disgraceful defeat in the 2019 general elections and beyond. We are agitating for youth leadership. We are not saying they should go back to their various homes to go and sit. They can still serve us. They are our fathers. We want them to advise us. We, want, we, we, want, we don't want to start believing that we are the leaders of tomorrow. Tomorrow will never come. 
tomorrow will never come. We want leadership. We want it as youth and we want it today. It's our right. It's our right and we are taking it. If they don't leave the stage for us by 2019, just as he has read, it will be a disgraceful thing for them. So called for a coalition of all youth organizations to bury their differences and form a strong, formidable force that will surmount the challenges of rebranding Nigeria. We therefore call for a coalition of all youth organizations, either religious, political, or student union, to bury their differences and form a strong, formidable force that will surmount the challenges of rebranding Nigeria, our fatherland. We are mindful that the journey will be tough and bristly, but we are determined to succeed. In Abuja, LM Chukwamika reports. The National Chairman of People Democratic Party, Prince Uche Secondos, has said that the party will resist rigging in the 2019 general elections. Secondos led other members of the National Working Committee and stakeholders of the party to Yenegua, the Baisa state capital, for the grand rally of the six-year celebration of Governor Seraike Dixon government. During the rally, the PDP chairman also received many defaults from the All Progressive Congress and other political parties. Secondos won the APC-led federal government, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and security agencies against rigging in 2019 election, saying that the PDP will not allow that to happen. He urged the state chapter of the party not to buy anybody coming into the party, saying that the door has been opened for them. On his part, Governor Siraki Dixon said Bayesa State was the foundation of the PDP, noting that because of that, the other side in the last governorship election did everything to take Bayesa by force. He said, but by the grace of God and the support of the people, they could not succeed.